each other and for that we have each other Happy Resurrection Day, everyone. Today, let us choose not to focus on all that's been going wrong, but rather what has already been done. Today, let us focus on a story thousands and thousands of years in the making, a story of hope, a story of love, and the story of the risen Savior. Today, let us choose to rise up. Living with uncertainty can take its toll. The normal day-to-day -day is replaced with fear, worry, doubt. When our normal is disrupted, our surroundings begin to feel weak. Foundations begin to rattle. Our lives become disoriented. As time goes on, we begin to lose sight of the one constant on our journey, Jesus. The fear is consuming, the worry draining, the doubt painful. Even in our darkest moments, when the last thread of hope has unraveled from our being, we must dwell on truth. We must remember, no matter what is happening around us, God is still sovereign. Today. Let us dwell on the truth of Easter. The stone has been rolled away. The grave has been rendered powerless. Death has transformed to life. In our fear, He is still risen. In our worry, He is still victorious. In our doubt, He is still alive. When everything seems hopeless, the hope of Easter remains. Happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. He is risen. Uh, I didn't hear you. So this time when I say he's risen, you say risen indeed. Are you ready? He is risen. That was pretty good. This time I want you to wake up your whole family, get the attention of the dog that's probably at your feet. He is risen. That's right, risen indeed. Well, man, this morning we had a beautiful sunrise service, and now we're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, together. In a few moments, we're even going to have an opportunity to take communion together. Grab some bread and whatever you have to drink, except for maybe not coffee. Uh, if you have a Lunchable, check it out. You got enough for the whole family, plus dessert for later. It's awesome. But remember, it's not the elements that make the act of, of communion holy. It's actually remembering Jesus and what he did. And we're going to do that together in a little bit. You know, the story of Easter, it's familiar to most of us. Anybody who's been alive for more than a couple of years has experienced the joy of eating a Cadbury cream egg uh, or doing whatever your favorite Easter tradition is. But for others of us, this is the day that changed everything. On the first Resurrection Sunday, history was changed forever. It was the day that we know that had love had come down and hope rose up. 
See, it's much bigger than egg hunts or chocolate bunnies. It's a day when history was changed for eternity. And this is that story. Let me tell you a story. You may not believe me. I barely believe it myself. But I can't dispute what my soul knows. Peter! John! It's all true. Come see this! Everything he said. The tomb! Every impossible detail. It's empty! It's all true. There may be days when we deny. I don't know him. When our faith loses its footing. You have me confused. I don't know him. And we stumble along our way. I said I don't know him! What has been found? What has been defeated? What has been forgiven? What was once dead has new life. What was once old has been made new. What was once finite has been made eternal. May we remember and follow the risen way.
screaming sheep they read to me It's just an empty shell How are we really taking him was more than I pretend Something strange had happened there Just what I did not know John believed a miracle But I just turned to go Circumstance and speculation it wouldn't lift me very high Cause I'd seen them crucified And I watched him die Back inside my room again Hint an anguish came Him, just adding it to my shame. But when at last it came to choices, I denied I knew his name. Even if he was alive, wouldn't be the same. Suddenly the air was filled with a strange and sweet perfume. Shined from everywhere, drove shadows from the room. Jesus stood before me with his arms and open wide. I fell down on my knees, clung to him and cried. As he picked me to my feet, as he looked me in the eyes. Shining out from him like sunlight from the skies. Guilt in my confusion disappeared in sweet release. Cause every fear I'd ever had melted in peace. He's alive! He's alive! There I was, empty handed, crying out from the pit of my despair. There you were, in the shadows, holding out your hand, you met me there. And now, where would I? be without you where would I be Jesus you were the voice in the desert calling me out in the dead of night fighting my battles for me you are my rescue story lifted me up from the ashes carried my soul from death to life bringing me from glory are my rescue story yes, you were writing the pages before I had a name before I
gave up on me You never gave up on me You are my testimony You never gave up on me You never gave up
down this dark and painful road I can face every fear of the unknown I can hear our God's children singing now that we will not be overtaken we will not be overcome he is risen three small words that brought the collective pace of humanity to an absolute standstill he is risen three words that shattered prisons words that shook the earth's foundations words that transformed a sense of utter despair into cries of pure joy and ecstasy echoes of history's greatest triumph that still shape our reality even today we're assaulted by constant distraction countless sources waging war for our attention yet three words pierce the noise in our hunger for validation, our desperate pleas for love and attention, three words calm our anxieties. In a universe spinning at breakneck speed, its inhabitants locked in an existential crisis, three words proclaim the purpose of our existence. He is risen. Lay hold of this truth and embrace the peace within. Yesterday, fear reigned in our hearts. Yesterday, we sat in crippling darkness. Yesterday, we suffered abuse and all the accusations of a broken world. But today, our King, our Healer, our Defender is risen. And this reality doesn't merely accompany us on a meaningless journey. This changes everything. For you see, if He is risen, then all other pursuits become secondary. All of our failures become insignificant. All criticisms and condemnations become irrelevant. There is only His word, His mission, and His infinite, unconditional love for you. Because He is risen, we look to tomorrow. Tomorrow we will stop defining our worth through status and social media. Tomorrow we will together build an everlasting kingdom. Tomorrow and every day after, we will dance in the radiance of a redeeming Savior who crushed death and set us free. There is nothing that Jesus cannot overcome. We know this because He lives. We know this because He is risen. He is risen. That simple three word phrase, it means everything. It changes everything. He is risen. His followers, they had given up everything to follow him. They had invested their, their whole life and their futures into this man, this one man who told them that he was from God and that he in fact was God. And they had experienced the power of God through him. They had seen the blind receive sight, the cripple walk, the deaf heard, the addict recovered. But it wasn't just the physical healings it was the thousands of other miracles that they saw. He walked on water right in front of them. He calmed the storm. He fed thousands with one boy's lunch. Even the dead were raised to life through this man. But this man, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, he was dead. They crucified him, they beat him, they put him in a borrowed grave. And for his friends, all hope was lost. I understand that Easter looks much different to us this year. In fact, many of us, we feel hopeless right now. In our lives, they feel as empty as the shelves at our local stores. And it's kind of eerie when you walk into them, isn't it? I mean, you see an empty store and the roads are bare and, and we've been asked to, to stay away from one another. We'll never forget 
Easter 2020, it looks much different and, and many, many, many of us have lost hope. But imagine how Jesus' friends felt. He told them days before that they would run away, they would desert him, they would leave him and abandon him and they denied it, but it would happen. The game changer though is that, that he has never and will never abandon us. And in fact, whatever we face or endure, he not only walks beside us, but he leads us, he pushes ahead of us. He is our warrior, he is our protector, and he is our provider. He's our friend that sticks closer than a brother. And even though everyone would desert him, this was the very moment he came to earth for. He was mistreated, he was murdered, but the Bible tells us that he volunteered his life as a sacrifice for us. See, in order for us to live, he had to die. The act of Jesus coming to earth was an act of pure love. Can you even fathom how much he must love us, how much he must love you to come to earth so he could die? There is no greater love. And there's no greater gift than our salvation through Jesus. Let's take a moment and let's read the first Resurrection Sunday. It says in Mark 16, Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salmon, went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just as sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked. But the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, and they said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. Then they briefly reported all this to Peter and his companions. Afterward, Jesus himself sent them out from east to west with the sacred and unfailing message of salvation that gives eternal life. Amen. They were instructed to go tell his friends. And the part I love is when, they, when the angel says, even Peter, especially Peter, go tell him. And maybe you're watching this and you're familiar with the, Peter, the story of Peter, right? He's, he's the dude that Jesus said, uh, Peter, the bad news is you're going to disown me. Not once, not twice, but three times. And Peter says, oh, there is no way that I'm going to turn my back on you, Lord. There's no way I'm going to disown you. But Peter did deny him. In fact, he denied him three times. Jesus had even warned Peter, but guess what? Even though Peter disowned Jesus, Jesus never disowned Peter. And Jesus has never disowned you. Maybe you're like Peter and you've walked away from your faith. Maybe uh, you've walked away from Jesus. You've never really verbalized it. You've never confessed that you, that you really don't believe, but you know in your heart internally that you're not where you need to be with God today. But the great news is that you can be. He's never left you. He's never abandoned you and he's never disowned you. So the two Marys went and they told his followers, he isn't at the tomb. And, and they were caught off guard, I'm sure. They were confused and they wondered where they took him. And through all of this happening, confusion and chaos, they catch a glimmer of hope. Could it be? Was it possible that the story wasn't finished? And when they heard what happened, that Jesus was missing, the Gospel of John tells us Peter and John, they got up and they ran as fast as they could. And as John peeked in and they saw the cloth lying there that they had wrapped Jesus' body in and they saw it alone without Jesus there, it says they believed. 
Some of you are hearing this today, and for the first time, you're believing. See, hope had risen in their hearts. Today, hope needs to rise in our hearts. I understand we're facing difficult times, but we have a Savior that has overcome death. And now we look to Him for our hope. This is the greatest news that we could ever hear. Jesus was no longer dead. Jesus was alive. He had risen from the dead. And so here's some amazing news for anyone who believes that the Bible is the word of God. In Romans 8, 11, it says, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. But how? How does this happen? It's, it's not by accident. It's not by being a good person. It's not by doing more good things than bad things. You can't earn your salvation. It's only through Christ that we can receive God's spirit. It's only through Jesus that we can receive the free gift of salvation. It's only through asking the one who came down out of love and willingly offered himself as a sacrifice he died so we could live. He exchanged his life for ours, his perfect life for our, <laughs> our lives. And you may say, that sounds too good to be true, Ben. You don't know the stuff I've done. I've just, I'm just too far gone. And you're right, I don't, I don't know all that you've done. But God does. And he still loves you. And when he was on the cross. Jesus forgave a criminal that had a death sentence. In fact, as he was dying, Jesus asked the Father to forgive the people that were murdering him. So while I don't know what you've done, I know that, that God does. And he loves you. And he's ready to forgive you. May today be the day you come alive. Romans 10, 9 says, if you openly declare with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that God raised him from the dead, that you'll be saved. And the Bible says over and over again that we've all messed up. You're not a unique case. Ben is messed up. Everyone is messed up. But you're not beyond salvation. See, we're all in the same boat. We just have to tell Jesus we're sorry and ask him for forgiveness. So for those of you who feel like you're too far gone, I, I love Psalm 96 verse 5 that says, Oh Lord, you are so good, so good, and so ready to forgive, and so full, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. How good is God? He is so good. And how ready is he to forgive you? He is so, so, so ready. Would you ask him that today? Would you ask him to forgive you? He came so that we could live. He lived a perfect life to exchange for, for our lives. Would you ask him to forgive you today? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Jesus, you're alive. We worship you today.